So you slipped and fell on ice or snow. What's next? Do you have a case? Do you not have a case? Sometimes it really depends. Before we dive into that, make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow along. My goal with this channel is to make sure that you and your future personal injury case are protected. While nobody ever thinks that they will be a plaintiff in a personal injury case, guess what? When people are hurt and not at fault, it's usually at times that they don't expect. So what I wanna do for you is make sure that you understand what to do, what not to do after a personal injury situation. So you slipped and fell on ice, on snow. Do you have a case? The thing about ice and snow, it totally depends on where you fell. For example, let's say that you're walking on a sidewalk in front of a municipal building. And then one block down, you're walking and you're in front of a actual business. It really depends on where you fall and who's responsible for the cleaning of that sidewalk. Number one. And number two, it also really depends on how unreasonable that the sidewalk was shoveled or salted and how long it took for that party to do that action. So let me give you a couple examples. Let's say that you were walking in front of a municipal building and you slipped and fell right in the middle of that storm and you broke your arm. The thing about that is number one, municipal clients, sometimes they don't have insurance and there are what are called fee caps when you try to sue a municipality. That's because really when you think about it from a practical perspective, municipalities are paying you out of tax dollars. So they get a little extra protection in certain scenarios. This is one of them. Next, in terms of let's say that you fell in the middle of the storm. Was it reasonable to expect that operator of that location to get that sidewalk cleaned during the middle of the storm? The answer is usually no. But let's say that the storm happened 12 hours ago, or even let's go even more extreme, two days ago, and let's say that that snow and ice has been sitting there frozen and it has been a problem for an extended period of time. There is no hard, fast rule as to what is or isn't reasonable in terms of when you shovel and ice, and I'm sorry, and salt your sidewalk. But really, it comes down to a couple of things, your snow or ice case. Number one, did you fall in a place that is owned by someone with insurance that you can recover from? For example, it's a lot different to fall in the parking lot of a Macy's than it is to fall, I'm gonna go again, in front of a courthouse or in front of a municipality building like a police officer's building. It's much different. The insurance policies are different. The insurance for Macy's is way more equipped to pay you for both your medical bills and for your pain and suffering that you go through for your injury there. But number one, what is the insurance company? And I mean insurance source, what type of insurance source is it? And number two, what is the reasonable amount of time that they had to get that sidewalk or that parking lot cleaned up? And then number three, and really importantly, what was the lighting like? Was it extremely dark in that Macy's parking lot? Were you not able to see the black ice? Were you able to see it clearly and it was a big pile and you parked your car in the one spot where you had to get out and you stepped on ice? You know, the thing about slip and falls on ice and snow, it's a lot different than like sitting at a rear end or sitting at a stoplight and getting rear ended. You're not going to have a 100% to 0% liability scenario very frequently. That's because sometimes the argument is against the person that falls, hey, if you saw it, you should have avoided it. And the truth is that does stand up sometimes in court, depending on the county you're in, depending on how bad the storm was, depending how bad the facts was, were. So in terms of you winning your slip and fall case in snow, it comes down to really a variety of things. 
what kind of insurance, how long that that snow and ice was sitting there, what is the lighting. Really, it's a factual determination. Let's say that you were wearing high heels in a snowstorm. You might lose that case because of that. Um, let's see. Was it possible that you should have been wearing glasses? Was it possible that uh, the, let's say that for example, Macy's had five snow blowers in their, in their garage, but they still didn't get the snow cleaned up for two days. Really, it's a factual determination as to who is at fault and it's different case by case. These kinds of situations are not cookie cutter. They're not a rear end accident. They're not, it's obviously their fault types of situations. But typically, depending on where you fall, depending on how bad the facts are, the injuries can be really serious. I've seen broken legs. I've seen compound fractures. I've seen broken arms. I've seen concussions. I've seen brain bleeds from snow slip and falls. These are really serious injuries. And depending on where you fall, a lot of the time you will fall in what I would call the right place, and you will have insurance to recover from. Not only will you get paid for your pain and suffering that you go through, but you also typically get your medical bills paid through that insurance company through something called MedPay, M-E-D-P-A-Y, MedPay. MedPay is something that is specifically allocated to paying for your medical bills when you make a claim if you get hurt on someone's property. So when you get hurt, number one, your medical bill should get paid. And number two, you should be compensated for what you're going through. But it really does depend on whether it is your fault or not. In the most basic sense, you would need to prove two things to the jury in your snow ice case. Number one, liability. And what that means in a fancy lawyer word is who is more at fault. If you are, let's say 10% at fault, and the other party is 90% at fault, let's go with that Macy's example, you will recover in that situation. So number one, if you win on liability, you move to question two, damages. How much is the pain and suffering worth? This is separate from getting your medical bills paid out of MedPay. This is your civil lawsuit. A lot of the times the goal is Let's get this thing settled so that nobody has to go to trial. But the truth is, as I repeat all the time, insurance companies are unreasonable. It's why I'm employed. So if the insurance company is unreasonable, you are going to maybe need to take that case all the way to a jury trial. If you take that case to a jury trial, it's up to the jury to determine who's at fault and how much is it worth. So snow slip and falls, horrible injuries, you do have a personal injury case, I really, really hope that none of you ever go through a snow slip and fall where you break a bone or get seriously hurt. But if you do, this is what I do. I can help you whatever state you're in. If you're in Idaho, I will find you a lawyer. If you're in California, I will find you a lawyer. If you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, I can help represent you with my law firm. So click below if you need a free case evaluation. Make sure to hit that subscribe button where I will make sure that you understand how to protect yourself and your personal injury case. Thanks so much.